Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and today in the Death Guard Codex Review Part 3 we're going to be taking a look at troops and fast attack choices. I decided to put both of them in the same video as the fast attack, fast attack slot, there we go, is small enough to where I can just lump them in as well as the troop choices. So we're going to we're gonna kick things off right with one of the most um, uh, divisive, div divis uh, uh, this this unit causes division, there we go, in the Death Guard community, and that is going to be Plague Marines. Uh, the player bases either love them or hate them. I happen to be on the love them side. I really do enjoy my Plague Marines. I go out of my way each time in casual, in casual narrative games, I might add, to take three squads of seven Plague Marines. And you know when you add them all in there together, that's 21, which is oh again divisible. Oh, oh the fluff, the fluff with the number seven. All right, but um, so I personally do enjoy plague marines. However, I don't have my rose tinted glasses on. I can tell you what's wrong with them. I can also tell you what what they excel at and kind of their shortcomings. All right, so stat line again. Uh, everything uh, infantry based is going to be five inch movement. Weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 3, strength 4, toughness 5, 1 wound with 1 attack, and leadership 7. Now, if we're including the sergeant, or the champion in this case, we're going to be getting 2 attacks and leadership 8. Okay, and going over the data sheet or the abilities, uh, death of the false emperor, so exploding uh, dice on 6s, and disgustingly resilient, which is the 5 up feeling of pain. They also have the ability to take the Icon of Despair, which is going to be minus one to their leadership. Not a real big thing to go after with the Death Guard. So um, the Icon Bearer, I know the, the guy has his own little special model. Uh, if you want to, you could more than likely convert him into a, uh, a Nurgle Chaos Lord. That's probably the best one for that unit. But for the overwhelming majority of the time, you're not going to take the... Um, the icon of despair. Now it does have its spot. Uh, it does have its place in other units um, inside the regular Chaos Space Marines Codex, but we will get to that when it's time for that one to get reviewed. And then this little guy down here, the Vector of uh, Death and Disease. Uh, this one, this one gets overlooked a lot. A Plague Marine armed with two Plague Knives, uh, a Plague Knife and a Bubonic Axe, or a Mace of Contagion and a Bubonic Axe. Uh, has an attack characteristic of two instead of one. Sorry about that really awkward sense that the whole time I was fighting off a sneeze. So that was uh, that was my um, you know William Shakespeare or William Shakespeare William Shatner. Oh god, that sneeze really just fried my brain. Um, William Shatner ask uh, reading of that sentence. So uh, we will get to the Millie, Millie Marines in a second. But what these Marines are going to excel at is shooting. And one of the fun things with these, at the time, uh, the recording of this, this squad can take triple plasma guns. So the champion can take one, and then you can have up to two marines take a plasma gun. And that's that's really where uh, the fun part um, excels for the plague marines, it being that you have an 18-inch rapid fire range because of the uh, the legion trait. So at 18 inches, you're getting two shots off the plasma. If you have them in a range of anything that can reroll, you know, you're obviously supercharging. And it's a pretty good or decent mid-range uh, anti-armor uh, option you have that's hidden inside your infantry. And if you're taking, uh, in my case, I take seven Plague Marines. I have four Plague Marines at Toughness 5 with Disgustingly Resilient to pad my uh, plasma guns before I start losing them. So there is that. Uh, also, another popular option is a plasma gun and then two blight launchers. If you're going to go with the two blight launchers approach, uh, this is going to be the marine squad. I would leave back near your your uh, lord with the arch contaminator warlord trait, so you get full rerolls uh, to wound off of them since they are plague weapons. Uh, the blight launchers, I might add, are actually pretty good. You have um, two shots. They're going to be assault, so you don't have to worry about the rapid fire. You get two shots no matter what range it is, either point blank or 24. Strength 6, AP minus 2, D3 damage. So the ability to re-roll all failed wounds because of the Arch Contaminator Warlord trait, very helpful, and it helps offset that kind of weird Strength 6 um, kind of kind of bubble it's in. If it was strength seven, that would be, well, that would be pretty awesome. Um, or strength five, but strength six is kind of an odd one. All right, so the other options we have in there, we have our Melta, uh, Melta gun, which is going to be an assault, which is nice it's an assault because, again, the Legion trait, we can advance and not suffer the penalty um, 
to the hit roll. So instead of being at a four up for weapon skill, we're still going to retain at a three. The only issue is it's a 12 inches and that is, um, it's abysmal. That's, that, that kind of sucks. So you're not going to see Meltas on, on the Plague Marines that often, unless it's something weird like the Plague Brethren, um, which is his own specialty unit. And uh, unless somebody has this kind of weird list, you're, you're generally not going to see Melta Guns on Plague Marines. The Plague Belcher, uh, which is a 9-inch assault D6, um, not a heavy flamer, it just has a, its regular um, bolter profile, but it does automatically hit, and it is a plague weapon, so you're going to be rerolling wounds. Uh, that and the Plague Spewer are going to be... Um, they're they're going to be your more counter uh, counter push options. So if you have them in the back, uh, babysitting your gun line or with your tanks, or try to do deep strike denial, it may make a little more sense to run these with two flamers as they are going to be in the back, just sitting there. But at the same time, that is a very expensive unit points wise just to have sit in the back and do nothing for most of the game. So the plague spewer and the plague belcher, I feel, are going to be more along the lines of a kill team. Um, loadout, not so much in, in massive 40k unless we're talking a low points value like 500 to 1000 point games, then that's a little different. But until then, not so much. Uh, so those kind of get overlooked. Again, the, the plasma gun here with its profiles, super good. Uh, sh rapid fire, um, so again we're getting that 18 inch rapid fire range with the legion trait, strength 7, AP minus 3, 1 damage, and when you supercharge it, pops it up to strength 8, AP minus 3, uh, 2 damage. Now, this one, this one's a little bit weird, it says on a roll of 1, the bearer is slain after all of its attacks have been resolved. It, it just says that you flat out die. It doesn't say that you take one mortal wound or anything like that, because if it did, your disgustingly resilient would apply. Uh, this just says you flat out die. So my understanding of it, and at least how it makes sense to me in the wording, is that your disgustingly resilient doesn't apply to plasma overcharge because it just says you were slain. It doesn't say anything about you taking any sort of mortal wounds. And when you read the rules for disgustingly resilient, it says each time you lose a wound on this model. And that's kind of my my thinking or rationale on it I, I could be wrong but that's that's how i'm interpreting it all right so plasma pistol yeah the plasma gun significantly better the champion can take a plasma pistol uh but for the most part you're you're going to be throwing the regular plasma gun on the champion uh, maybe with a few exceptions when we get into the melee marine option, but since actually we just ex uh, went through all of the, the ranged options, I, that would be a fantastic segue into the melee option. So you can kit the entire squad of Plague Marines to have both um, melee weapons, and it's it sounds really good on paper. When you actually get them into the game, it's a different story. It's um, it's going to be extremely frustrating. You can use rhinos uh, to get them in, up and close to the battlefield, but the problem with the rhino is it you're only moving ten inches. Uh, you're you can pop smoke, so you're minus one to hit, but you know you're, you're still exposed on the battlefield. Probably the best option is going to be the forge world uh, drill transport because that thing deep strikes and it's off the board, so it can't can't be damaged and that one can pop up and then the drill itself is also very potent so uh, if you're going to deliver your melee marines that is probably the most viable option now if you're going to be serious about it and equip them the flail the corruption is going to be the uh, auto take for this one because each um <clears throat> i'm sorry you make d3 hit rolls for each attack with this weapon instead of just one so with the vectors of disease and death you're going to be adding one attack to the marines already so oh there it was there was that that uh that burp was fighting off for for a little bit now, oddly enough on the same on the same data ability or data sheet ability in the data sheet oh man that this paragraph here is just oh i i'm being i'm being blessed by zeech right now and just having my brain changed all right but anyway back to uh back to the death guard so each of the, uh, those two hits turn into two d3 hits so on average you're going to be getting around four uh, for the mace now what makes this one special is that excess damage for this is not lost instead it keeps reallocating 
uh, to other models in the unit until that entire uh, unit is destroyed or you've run out of damage. So it's like mortal wounds just without being called mortal wounds. So you're looking at plus two strength. So your Marines are going to be hitting on, oh, I'm sorry, strength six, AP minus two, two damage a pop. And the death to the false emperor prox, if you're fighting an Imperium unit, your one hit turns into an additional D3 for all of the extra uh, exploding goodness. So a flail of corruption is an extremely powerful, uh, that was my computer, if you guys are wondering what the beeping sound is, that's, that's me, uh, extremely powerful and potent melee weapon for the Plague Marine squad. It, I know it's a super OP in kill team, and it's actually pretty good on regular 40k tabletop. Uh, the Great Plague Cleaver, it's uh, it's a souped up power fist basically, so times 2 strength, AP minus 3, and instead of uh, D3 damage you're looking at D6, but you are subtracting 1 from the hit roll. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a 50-50 shot to do something really cool, but for the most part, for the same amount of points and the hassle of trying to get something in range, you might as well take that Flail of Corruption, more dice, the excess damage isn't left over. Um, it, you know, very, very good for most things in the game. Uh, again, we can also pop the uh, Stratagem Veterans of the Long War for plus one to wound. So, uh, but the Great Plague Cleaver, uh, I would not take that over the Flail of Corruption. Okay, so your Mesa Contagion, you do have, sub have to subtract one from the hit rolls, but you do gain plus two strength, minus one damage, I'm sorry, a minus one AP and a flat three damage. So that is that is pretty good when you're going against heavy infantry, uh, like Terminators, Primaris, uh, Custodes. Uh, particularly Custodes, uh, especially if they have Storm Shields, they're going to have a two up save. That AP minus one is going to put them at their three up invul, so they're at their invul already. And if they fail it, that is just a flat out dead Custode with three, uh, three damage. Um, so it, that is pretty nice there. You just have to deal with the minus one to the hit rolls. And uh, then we get our you know good old fashioned plague knives and plague swords. Uh, the plague sword it's um, it's a little bit more expensive, but you can reroll failed wounds for this weapon. Just straight up failed wounds. So if you're wounding something on six and you know you roll. Uh, a five instead of having to just re-rolling the ones like you would for a regular plague weapon you're re-rolling everything so it is it is pretty nice in that sense uh no ap though and only one damage so it does um does kind of balance uh blah, balance itself right there uh, we did have our good old-fashioned power fist so it, uh, strength times two ap minus three d3 damage uh subtract one from the hit rolls for this and then we get our um blight grenades and crack grenades so uh blight grenade is like a frag grenade except for that is a plague weapon which is a massive difference when we start getting into the elites the uh, biologist putrefier uh, and the warlord trait arch contaminator do affect these grenades since they are plague weapons big 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 distinction and it's um it, it does allow for some pretty crazy combos so in terms of uh if you want a melee marine uh squad you know Flail of Corruption, absolutely all the way. Uh, Mace of Contagion, uh, I, I do like its damage output and its ability to wound. Uh, that minus one to hit, though, kind of, uh, it's, it's a bit of a deterrent, but not enough for me to not take it. Oh, I totally forgot about the bubonic axis. So uh, the axis, uh, just a regular axe profile, plus one AP minus two, one damage. But the, the big takeaways from, from these ones are going to be uh, the Flail of Corruption for sure the Mesa Contagion, and the Axes, uh, as well as your, just your standard Plague Knife. Now, what's also really important to note is that all of these, except for the Power Fist and the, um, oddly enough, the Plague Sword, are uh, Plague Weapons, meaning so if you do cast the uh, Blades of Putrefaction, you are plus one to wound, and then all Plague Weapons, if you do a wound roll of seven, which is basically six, um, does generate mortal wounds so it is important to note uh there you do have some synergy with that spell as well as veterans of the long war so now you can generate mortal wounds on fives and sixes and all that great stuff but again the, the biggest problem with the plague marine melee option is just getting them into combat and the best option you have i should really just opt out of that and uh, close that out because that's just going
Um, the best option you have to get your melee marines into range is that forge world drill and that is that's expensive uh, money wise it's actually fairly reasonable points wise but but you know real real life money it's it's a, it's a pricey option so the plague marines are best left as a a shooty unit you know triple plasma or plasma and two blight launchers and uh, just kind of leave them in midfield a, a bit of a, a speed bump they're pretty durable speed bumps uh, they do they do cost a lot points wise they are they are a little pricey though so that's the that, that's that's the big detraction why the community doesn't really pick up on them uh, especially when we start comparing them to cultists oh man nailed that segue so i just went through the the death guard faq and uh the the new one for um was it the, the big one in april i think it was april 29th the the castellan faq if you would and the regular chaos space marines codex uh says you know it, it had mere mortals added to it meaning cultists do not gain the legion traits uh it doesn't say anything like that in the the death guard codex and it doesn't say anything about that in the death guard faq However, with that being said, I know um, GW's intent on cultists and the the nerfing them or nerfing of them. So I wouldn't really count on our cultists and a thousand sun cultists retaining their legion trait for any time in the uh, in the near future. But in the meantime, while it's still legal, uh, they do benefit from the uh, the legion trait, which is. Uh, rapid fire at 18 no penalty for moving and shooting with heavy weapons and no penalty for moving and shooting with assault weapons so um, you know auto guns and heavy stubbers you can knock yourselves out big ass cult cultist blobs you can have them backed up by a unit of pox walkers and pops the stratagem you know the the dead walk again uh, so every time you lose a cultist you can replenish your pox walkers uh, if you're really needing uh, screening so you have a bit of a, a way to kind of shuffle units around in that regard but the uh, the cultists though they do really well in big blobs uh, morale is going to be a big issue uh, they're only leadership six they have a five uh, six up safe and no disgusting the resilience so they are going to be dying left right and center so with that being said just start factoring in um, uh, the losses to morale you can just uh, account for that or if you really want to pop the, your your two command points to make them fearless and auto pass morale there is that option but just anticipate losing a ridiculous amount of cultists and try to mitigate that by leaving units of pox walkers near them to um, you know shuffle the units around so like sure you lose a cultist but now you just gained a pox walker okay you lost two more cultists now we're up three pox walkers um, things like that uh, for the uh, FAQ, you can have the pox walkers go above starting unit strength. So, say you have a unit of ten pox walkers, you use the stratagem cloud of flies, so now they're non-targetable. You start losing cultists, you can bump them up to twenty pox walkers, but anything past twenty, you have to start paying the reserve points for. So you're good up until max unit size. All right, which leads us into pox walkers. So these guys are uh, an absolute fantastic screening unit and they are no slouches in in combat in large numbers I, I will emphasize the part on large numbers if you start losing a bunch of them you drop down below 10 they start falling off pretty fast and they're really unimpressive but in large numbers with the correct amount of support and characters these things will do work and they are uh they they are a, a community favorite now personally i do not like Pox walkers all that much i i use them as bubble wrap and in that regard they meet and fulfill my expectations you know 100 percent in and actually trying to use them to make them viable as a, a damage dealing source in my army not so much so uh the big thing of what makes them amazing at uh screening is they have disgustingly resilient they only have a seven up armor save which basically means they don't have an armor save unless they're in cover and then it only goes to a six um, but they never have to take morale tests so if you have a big unit of uh, 20 you lose 19 your one guy isn't running away no matter what so nice there and anytime they kill an infantry model in the fight phase you can add one um, model to that pox worker unit so 
uh, essentially if they do survive a charge in a fight and they fight back and they kill something well now you started to replenish your screen so it just it it's uh, kind of like the necrons with uh, reanimation protocols if you want to wipe out an entire squad of uh, poxwalkers you just have to wipe them all in one turn and not leave any of them up or or alive or they start coming back so uh, they're they're the little, little unit that could also if you happen to have a unit with 10 or more you can add one to the hit rolls so now instead of uh, hitting on fives they're going to be hitting on fours so you got a 50 50 shot uh, they do have the appropriate keywords to use uh, veterans of the long war so uh, if you get them properly psychically buffed meaning you get blades of putrefaction for plus one to wound putrescent vitality plus one strength uh, plus one toughness and they are in range of typhus they're going to be strength five toughness five um, plus one to wound and uh, no mortal wound generations because poxwalkers do not have plague weapons so pretty durable screen not as durable as the the king of screening at the moment which happens to be the plague bearer so now we have two units inside the codex i think they were put here for uh, two reasons one sheer convenience and two to just really um fill out and build the codex now uh, that's that's really only, only reasons i can think of because they do not have the death guard keyword so if you put them in your battalion detachments to try to get command points um it will not be battle forged and you won't get your command points i know they are physically in the codex and a lot of people are of the mind if it's in the codex you can bring it in your army uh, that is true you just have to finagle the keywords a bit you can take them in a nurgle detachment uh, but again it it's, won't be battle forged and you won't be gaining uh, pardon me uh the legion traits if that's something you're after or the loci of nurgle if that's um something you're after but again you can mix and match based on that uh, so just keep that in mind you you can't you can't bring two squads of plague marines and then plague bearers uh, you can take them in their own separate demons detachment which i would strongly recommend doing you you're really not incentivized to mix and match in that detachment on a troops level um, when we start getting into the demon engines and things uh, of that nature that is a different story but for nerglings and plague bearers i would take them in a uh, actual detachment even if it's a patrol detachment just to gain the loci of nurgle because that is very strong when we start synergizing but we'll save that for the um the, the demon engine section of the codex so i believe the data sheets are just in here for uh convenience sake uh plague bearers absolutely top tier at screening right now uh, absolutely amazing uh their cloud of flies ability which makes them um at the start of the turn i believe it is um oh let's see here. <clears throat> at the start of a uh at the phase i'm sorry at the start of the phase if that unit has 20 or more plague bearers they are minus one to hit very important wording on that one say at the shooting phase they start out with 29 models and uh, say it's a, a, a pack of aggressors whatever manages to strip away and put you down to seven models they're still minus one because at the start of your phase they were at full strength they also have a, a five up and vulnerable save uh, they have their five up uh, disgustingly resilient so um, also fun fun little thing for these guys if they take the icon during the morale phase if you roll a one they automatically pass and you get to add d6 um, models back to the unit so if you are really really serious about your screening take a good long hard look at the plague bearers uh, i know the current um meta for the hero hammer it's probably going to change a little bit now that uh vindicare vindicari assassins are um are a thing now um you just hit bring 90 plague bearers with the hero supports uh from the demons codex and hide all of your spell casting heroes behind that uh that massive blob of plague bearers and it's going to take your opponent a good long time to chew through that to get to your things that are actually doing damage and then the plague bearers in large numbers can do a, a fair amount of damage themselves all right nerglings everyone's everyone's favorite you know the nerglings so these cute little guys the uh, the little lords as, as they're called in the uh, the, the lords of silence uh, on a side note if, if you are if you're a death guard fan and uh, or just anything nurgle really pick up the book lords of silence that that book was absolutely amazing um i've only got about three quarters of the way through it but so far it is absolutely uh amazing top um like top four easily favorite um uh black library novels and just uh 
<laughs> oh, the, the the little lords are are hysterical. The <laughs> oh, the, the the scene with the uh, uh, the nurgling and the tally man and towards the beginning of the book just it, it cracked me up, and I was like, oh, I love these guys. So, uh, absolutely love the the nurglings and their their models are they're just mischievous and always up to something. Um, so these guys can infiltrate during the beginning of the game, so they can be set up uh, on the board, you know. But you do have your typical um, deep striking rules, so no more nine inches away from the enemy deployment zone, which there's more than likely going to be units at the edge of the deployment zone. Uh, they do not get their disgustingly resilient rolls if the damage pr uh, profile is more than one. Uh, more often than not, people are going to be pitching just regular bolter fires into them because their strength, uh, you know, toughness two. So you bolters are wounding on twos. Um, so it just makes a whole bunch of sense to just send a regular bolter fire into the nurglings. If anyone's wasting like two damage or D3 damage on nurglings, they're doing their job even better than, than what they were intended to. Uh, but these guys are also a pretty good screen. Um, they don't have a bunch of staying power, but they are pretty good. And uh, you're, you're really not you're really not going to be killing a whole bunch with Nurgling. So strength two, toughness two, their attacks are strength user. Um, not really worth spending command points on to get these things to perform well in close combat. However, they're good for tying stuff up, denying uh, deep strike, uh, holding objectives at the very very beginning of the game. So if you have objectives outside of the deployment zones, you can deep strike them onto them. Uh, they're they're good for board control, and in that respect, they are. They are amazing and definitely worth uh, worth looking at. All right, so now that's all for the the troop choices. We're going to be jumping over to the fast attack slots. Okay, and while we're talking or while we're still fresh in the minds about things not being in the codex uh, that are Death Guard, Plague Drones. Again, this uh, these ones did take a hit uh, the last time in Chapter Proof. Their points cost did go up. Um, they were surprisingly performing really well. A lot of people kind of overlooked them and they didn't get their, their due uh, respect and attention outside of the tournament scene, but Plague Drones were pretty, pretty beast. Pardon me. So you get your 10 inch movement, which is huge because most things in the Death Guard Codex uh, do not move that fast at all. You're looking like a five inch move is, is your, your, your average, but uh, these were thrown in here again for convenience. They don't have the Death Guard keyword. So you are going to have to um, work them into a demon's detachment, but still a good, strong consideration to look at, even if you are, um, or even with the points increase, they're good at board control. They can tie stuff up. Uh, they can actually pump out a respectable uh, amount of damage. Um, nothing against hard targets because they, they don't have any AP, um, but still, uh, still a good, respectable unit and something worth taking a look at. All right, so um, this one, the the chaos spawn or the coas spawn, if you if you are a fan of the emperor has tech to speech, coas. Uh, these little guys, I I absolutely love them. I I, I love the chaos spawn. They are my squirrels. Uh, they are they are my distraction carnifexes. They are the attention getters. They're twenty five points per model. They they look scary. I think they're on like a fifty mil base. Uh, they're sore. They're they're medium size. They look scary, and if no one knows what they are, if they, if no one is uh, you know up to speed on your your chaos codex, they think these things are absolutely terrifying. And I can't tell you how many times my chaos spawn have um, you know they, they valiantly died soaking up las cannon fire, or overcharged plasma, or just high volumes of stuff. Like these chaos spawn for twenty five points have kept my larger units. Uh, uh, basically untouched for, for a few turns just because they look scary. Now that they that effect only really happens in um, in casual narrative play. Competitive players are going to know exactly what a chaos spawn is and uh, deal with it appropriately. They are they are not not that strong in in terms of um, um, you know, staying or uh, damage potential and staying power. They have no invulnerable save. Uh, their regular save is five up. They don't have disgustingly resilient. They are a flash in the pan. Uh, you can take four of them if you really wanted to, but that's a hundred points. And for a hundred points, I could I can easily take something else that'll outperform it. But they are, or they can be a load of fun in casual games. Um, they are. 
they, they are they're hit or miss because they're they attacks they don't have a they don't have a flat static attack um it's just d6 so you can get one or you can get six you know and they're hitting on fours but if uh or at the start every time they fight you roll a d3 and they can be anywhere between ap minus four uh re-rolling failed wound rolls or two additional attacks so any one of those three and and that's what you're getting but uh normally they're just ap minus two two damage so pretty good if you can get them to hit and wound uh they'll be uh killing intercessors um for every unsaved armor and they also do a minus one to leadership which uh is not bad i'll take it i'll take it all for all for 25 points now normally what i do if um if the opponent knows what they are is i'll just go send them off to hide in cover uh, or hide in a building with an objective and just leave them there to to babysit an objective for as long as possible if the opponent wants to uh, contest the objective and actually commit like a, a squad of infantry to it you're getting pushed off of it but you it's the cheapest thing we can have to babysit an objective. Sure, you can send a squad of poxwalkers, but that's 60 points as opposed to 25. Uh, but you do have to worry about reclaiming that objective later if you're going with that tactic. Um, if you're also trying to fill out a brigade, they're an absolute must because you can fill out the entire fast attack slot for 75 points. Um, you know, it's an absolute deal. All right, and then we get to one of the, one of the big MVPs of the Codex. And that is going to be the Fetid Blow Drone. These guys are terrifying in casual games. In um, <laughs> oh man, in in match play, you're going to have uh, tournament players that know how to deal with these things. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be horrifically annoying. Don't get me wrong, but your opponent will know how to deal with them. Uh, they're a little overwhelming for for most casual games. Uh, just people hate them. They're toughness seven. Uh, disgustingly resilient they have a five up invulnerable save they blow up on fours if you do happen to take them down uh, they have uh, plague spitters which are um, your, your more that's going to be your more um, uh, standard loadout form which uh, two heavy flamers which is going to be strength user um, so it's going to be um, strength six unless you have them near a herald in which they're going to be strength seven uh, ap minus one one damage uh, so they're going to be a, a anti-infantry flamer and you again you have two of them it has fly so we can fall back and shoot if you bracket it it's still you know automatically hitting so you don't have to worry about its weapon skilling degrading but you don't have to worry about that anyway because it has a fixed weapon skill no sorry weapon and ballistic skill i'm sorry so bloat drones bloat drones are great absolutely great um there they do a lot of work against the tau i found i've had a lot of success running bloat drones against the tau um the alternative loadout for it is the heavy light launcher if you're going to run a gun line you can leave it back in arch contaminator range um the reason why i would um i would like this one is after i'm sorry <clears throat> pardon me so after the FAQ where they, they said, uh, stated that the, the Relic Helm now bumps out the Warlord trait by an additional 3 inches, so you're getting a 10-inch coverage um, for that, you can bump your uh, Fetid Bloat Drone up to about that 10-inch maximum range and kind of leave it as a speed bump before things get to your artillery tanks so you can slow and advance down. It's an assault weapon, so it's not taking the penalty for moving and shooting. However, this uh, this particular unit does not qualify for the Legion trait, so if you advance it, you will be losing that, um, or you'll be taking that minus one to hit. Uh, strength six, AP minus two, D3 damage. Again, it, it is a plague weapon. So again, Arch Contaminator, you're re-rolling all failed wounds. So a bunch of synergy there. Also, it's a 36 inch weapon, so you can reach out and touch something with this. All right, a fun one that uh, I like, uh, I, I, I low-key really like this unit, um, is the Flesh Mower. I, if I'm running a lot of Demon Princes, I will, I will throw a Flesh Mower up there with them. You'll get six additional attacks with it, so for a total of nine attacks at full bracket, strength plus two, so we're looking at strength eight, AP minus two, two damage, get wrecked, and you can cast blades of petrifaction on this so now you're at plus one to wound so you're wounding knights and anything toughness eight on threes you're generating mortal wounds on sixes and oh, it's also a plague weapon so if you want to leave it in the back for a um a point defense for your gun line 
it can it can benefit from the warlord trait and reroll all failed wounds. So there's there's a lot to love about this. Um, the plague probe, the other melee weapon that comes standard with it, I, I think it's I think it's over costed at 25 points. That's it's a little that's that's obscene. It's it's ridiculous. It should definitely come down to like 15 points. And I think that's where that's where the balance would be absolutely perfect for this unit if that plague uh, plague probe came down from 25 to 15 points. But very strong, very strong unit uh, from the Codex in general. One of the one of the rising stars, and um, it's it's earned its reputation. It's earned its points. It's it is a fun, good, strong unit in uh, in casual narrative in. In competitive play, there's some other options, uh, specifically in like Forge World or a little bit more uh, synergy-wise than than the Bloat Drone. However, you will see them still on the table every so often. Um, but in casual games, absolutely amazing. I I end up or I ended up buying four of them, so I have four Bloat Drones, and uh, you know two with spitters, one flesh mower, one heavy um, heavy blight launcher. I absolutely love these things. They're great. I recommend you pick up a few. All right, and then the Mephitic Blight Haulers. Uh, these things, these things are pretty clutch. Actually, let me get through. There we go. So these guys have a lot, a lot of utility. They are more than just their firepower. Uh, they do have a 10 inch move. Very nice, very nice. Uh, they do not suffer the penalty for moving and shooting their heavy weapons. Uh, but if you advance them, you're not you're not ignoring that for the for the assault weapons. Uh, they have a five up and vulnerable save. They have uh, foul stench, which means they have to be. Uh, I'm sorry, in the fight phase, they're minus one to hit. In the fight phase, they're minus one to hit. Um, beforehand, I or in, in previous games, um, I've had a caster or, or like a demon prince in range of these guys. I've cast um, the minus one to hit miasma pestilence. Hurled uh, sent these into a knight. Like a, like a castellan, they'll generally a, a few of them will survive the Overwatch um, and tie up the castellan. And since they're they're going to be minus two to hit, you know it's it's going to be a little tough for for the castellan to river dance all over him because he'll, he'll basically be hitting on sixes if he's at full bracket. Uh, or you can set it into just a, a regular knight and. Um, just really offset or try to mitigate the damage and tie it up for a little bit all right uh, also the trilobe which means if you bring a unit of three of them you can add one to the hit roll so instead of hitting on fours and guardsmen like shooting you can have regular space marine level shooting so hitting on threes which i would highly recommend doing that that is the way to run them um, you can run one malefic blight or uh, malefic light hauler, but you're basically using that for the arm utility and not necessarily for its firepower because one of them is extremely underwhelming and you're like, why did I even buy this unit? This is awful. If you run three of them, totally different story. Like these things are rock stars, but they're my MVPs. I'm taking more of them. I might even take nine of them because uh, you can take nine of them for I think it's a mere 1200 and something odd points. Um, but each each data sheet will allow up to three of them in a squad and you by the rules of three so three by three it's nine you know all that great stuff i i don't know why i felt the need to explain simple math but um i did so again these things also blow up on fours and friendly death guard infantry um do you have to make that distinction on the infantry if they are entirely within seven inches of the of the um the blight haulers they will gain um, cover or basically the effective cover for the armor saves so if you are a marine heavy list or you're running like uh, say some terminators and you're running a pack of three of these guys you know you have a pretty pretty good coverage um, for that you have you know seven inches from say the extreme left and then unit cohesion so two inches over you have your second blight hauler another two inches over you have your second blight hauler at the width of that base and then seven inches of extreme on the right side so it actually has a pretty big footprint uh, for the amount of cover saving it if you take three of them and line them up side by side uh, if you're running if you're running marine heavy list definitely definitely take a good strong look at these guys um, they do are they are equipped with a multi uh, multi misser uh, a missile launcher which can go between frag and crack missiles 
So you do have an anti-infantry option. You also do have an anti-vehicle option and the bile spurt. A lot of people forget about the bile spurt, uh, which is a 12 inch assault weapon, which is a plague weapon. So if it's in range of the arch contaminator warlord trait, you're getting full rerolls of wound on that one. Um, but it also does have a pretty good melee weapon, uh, strength six, AP minus two, one damage. So that AP minus two, um, super useful super useful and each one is three attacks so if you get nine haulers into close combat uh say somebody hurls infantry at you like guardsmen or something just to tie them up thinking that you can't shoot uh you're swinging back with nine attacks hitting on threes um strength six you're going to be wounding most infantry the like the overwhelming majority of infantry on threes uh there was going to be a few expe uh, exceptions of like um buffed buffed units like um for example, like our Terminators with the Putrescent Vitality, they're going to be strengths or Toughness 6. Um, so those you'll be on 4, but the overwhelming majority of the infantry in the game, you're going to be wounding on 3s. Um, regular Guardsmen in this case, you're going to be wounding on 2s, AP minus 2, so you're punching through a lot of armor saves already, and you can start removing models. Um, these guys can, or just like the, the regular blow drones, can be a pain in the ass to get off the board. Uh, there's also some shenanigans you can run with the Great Unclean one from the regular uh, Demons Codex, and you can actually resurrect a hauler. It's, it's kind of cheeky. It only happens once. Once your opponent realizes you can do that, the Great Unclean one is no longer going to be alive. Um, but when it, when it happens, it is, it is hysterical. There's, there's a lot of things that have to uh, line up in order for that combination to work. It's not something that I, I would really bank uh, on happening, but it is fun. I've only gotten to work once in a game, and um, but usually my great and clean one dies before my my haulers do. So, uh, but it was it was a lot of fun to put a hauler back on the board from being resurrected. But uh, I will I will save the mechanics for that for that shenanigans uh, in another video because that one that one's going to be a fun video. But um, bloat drone hauler absolutely absolutely amazing uh this one is an easy to bike or easy to build kit i'm sorry so it, it's going to be on the cheaper side it's a, it's a unit that's actually worth it um would consider picking up multiples of them i happen to have th uh, three haulers myself and four bloat drones so i do have some crazy shenanigans going on with the demon engines list and there's a, a few other things i want to add um uh, after the after the recent faq they Oh, I'm getting off in the woods. I'm talking about heavy supports. We're going to save that for the heavy support video. But <laughs> All right. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope that was helpful and informative. If you have any comments or questions, go and leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll see you guys next time for uh, part four. Well, I will be talking about the elites.